Hello, everyone. The book we're going to be talking about today is one of those twisty, turny kind of books. The kind where you think you know what's going on, you think you know the score, you think you know the deal, uh, but then the author has a trick up their sleeve, and they'll pull all that away in the best way and most horrifying way possible. Woo! It's a good one. Let's talk about that right now. All right, so the book we're going to be talking about today is called Till We Become Monsters by Amanda Headley. Now, when I, when I heard that this was the debut novel from this author, I was actually blown away because it's so good. And if that's the case, if this is actually just her first novel, uh, she is going to be a force to be reckoned with in the horror community, I do believe. Um, this book is a mixture of family trauma, uh, monsters, <clears throat> folklore, and legends. And it uh, basically concerns a family. Um, you have the father, you have the mother, but it focuses, I think, mainly on the two sons, Corin and Davis. Now, Davis is the elder, and we learn right away that he's a bit of a brat, uh, to put it lightly. He's manipulative. He's uh, always seeking attention. He wants things his way because his brother, Corn was kind of a mistake. He wasn't supposed to be born. And he felt that all that attention that they were giving to Corn at the time was taken away from him. So he, he's a very rude boy. He's a very uh, straightforward, bad seed kind of dude. And when we first meet him, we believe he does something that is truly horrible, and I'll get to that in a minute. Now, Corin, on the other hand, he's a studious one. He's always thinking, and, but he kind of feels ignored by his family because Davis is always uh, taking the attention away from him every chance he gets. <clears throat> and he does it just to uh, let his brother know that in Davis's eyes, he's not wanted here. Uh, we first meet Corin. When he's sitting with the only person that gives him attention, his grandmother, and for, and for reasons that will be discovered later, uh, his grandmother loves Corin, but she does not like Davis at all. In fact, she, she kind of hates him a little bit because she realizes <clears throat> that he's, he's, he's just not right, and she understands what he's doing, and she's the one that will usually refuse the attention of Davis to give it to Corin, who she feels is um, lacking at a, in attention at their home. But when we meet them, uh, his grandmother likes to sit down with him and read stories to him, mainly legends and folklore. And <clears throat> uh, the particular story they're reading is about the fairy people who kidnapped human babies and then replace them with exact replicas, except the replicas are, are fairy changelings. And uh, these changelings look like the real humans, but they're very mischievous, uh, they're very bad, they're always causing trouble, and those kind of things. And Corin believes with all his heart that he, his brother is actually a changeling, and that he has to find a way to get rid of that changeling and get his brother, uh, his real brother, back. Now, when we first meet Davis, though, well, we're, it appears that he has done something really uh, horrible. He has pushed his grandmother down the stairs, breaking her neck, killing her instantly, because he wanted money and she would only give him $5. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's already getting into very creepy territory. Corrine, of course, Corrine, of course is very upset about this. <clears throat> and he finds out that in this legend, in this folklore about the fairy and the changelings, that the only way to get the real human back is to push the changeling into a fireplace, a fully lit fireplace. <clears throat> and they will then scamper up the chimney 
and the next day the human will be returned safe and unharmed. He believes this. He's, he's under a lot of grief. He's, he's experiencing a lot of grief because of the death of the only person that paid him attention. And so he decides this is what needs to be done to get his real brother back. So he pushes him, Davis into a fire, into a lit fireplace, causing a irreparable and severe third degree burns to one of his arms and uh, uh, basically changing the course of his life forever, much to the shock and dismay of his parents. Because of this, he's sent to a mental institution at that young age, and uh, he's treated uh, horribly there by everybody, including the orderly, some of the other patients, even the psychiatrist in charge, the therapist in charge. <clears throat> uh, he's abused uh, physically and mentally and emotionally, and he's there for three months, but when he comes back, he's not quite the same boy. Now we fast forward to, to a, as adults. Uh, Corin is off at a college. He's about to do his thesis. He has a girlfriend. He's on his own, away from his family, who he thinks doesn't give a one hoot about him. They don't care about him. It's all perfunctionary as far as he's concerned. All their affections, all the things they say are nothing more than uh, robotic, trying to placate him and act like <clears throat> they actually care. Davis, on the other hand, continues his ways that he did as a child. He stayed at home. He's an adult living at home. He doesn't have a job. He doesn't have much of a prospect in life. He doesn't have any goals or ambitions. He sits down. He eats their food. He lives rent-free. He just likes to sit and watch hockey games and uh, sometimes hang out with his friend. And this is causing a lot of stress for the parents. <clears throat> And this is where the story picks up steam, and this is where the story really starts getting good. Because we learn all this in, in just a little bit less than the first half of the book. Uh, but by the end of the book, your feelings are going to change. Your thoughts on these different people and different aspects of their lives are going to change. And it doesn't happen immediately. It's not like, okay, this is what we know now, and then all of a sudden, this is what we know. It changes slowly over the course of the book, making you think if what you're reading is... Is that what I really think? Is that what, what's really happening in this book? But by the end, all them thoughts you had at the beginning, all the thoughts you, you think you know who's good, who's evil, what's right and what's wrong, those expectations are going to be blown away. It's like the author says, I'm setting you up here. Here's a, here's a nice little cracker. Everybody likes a cracker. But by the end of the book, she's taken that cracker and crumbled it up in your hand, leaving the crumbs to fall to the side as your mind is blown away at uh, what actually happens here. I'm not going to say anything more about the plot because you have to experience this for yourself. Uh, but I will say one, the, the thing that really stands out to me about this book, not only is it horrific and terrifying at the end, and, and it is. Uh, there's a lot of blood. There's a lot of... Uh, Things going on because of a, a terrible accident that's happened that affects some of these people and how they deal with it. <clears throat> but I really like the family dynamic in this book because this is a dysfunctional family. I, at it, I mean, there's no other way to put it. Highly, highly dysfunctional. We get to see the point of view and the thoughts of each member of the family, the mother, the father, and both boys, and there's a lot of conflict there. There's, there's always this underlying uh, feeling of anger toward each other, distrust toward each other. Um, and through these perspectives, we begin to see different ideas and different opinions take shape. For instance, we, we read about, you know, we hear from Corin. And his thoughts, and when you're reading it, you think, wow, he really was neglected. Like his parents are just letting Davis run the house, uh, and they're ignoring him, and, and uh, he deserves better. But then when we start seeing it from the perspective of Davis and from the perspective of the mom and dad, they each have a different take on, and different opinions on what has actually transpired in the past as they were growing up and uh, the effects that it's had on each of them. And it's kind of like when two, when two of your friends are fighting and you only hear the argument from one friend and you think, wow, that's pretty terrible. But then when you hear it from the other friend, you begin to think, 
well, you know what? Maybe, maybe he deserved it. You know, if you only hear one side of the story, of anybody's story, then your, your opinion is going to be skewered, right? And that's what this book does beautifully because it lets, you, it lets your opinion be skewered during the first half. And so you, you're riding comfortably along, thinking you know the score, you know what's going on, and then it starts breaking apart over the course of the book, especially that last half, and uh, your opinions will start changing about some of these characters, and uh, things are going to be revealed, and things are going to happen that, that are truly, truly horrifying, and... Uh, you're going to be blown away by in the end of at the end of this book. You're just your mind's just going to be put through the ringer. And this is a book you really have to pay attention to because there are hints and and things throughout the book of what might be coming, uh, but not enough to give anything away. It's not like you're going to be the, halfway through the book and then say, "I know what's going on. I don't need to finish it." Because if you do that, you're going to miss. A lot. You're going to miss the main point of the book. Uh, and I really, really love the writing style of this author. Uh, she made it seem like a, uh, one thing, twisted it around, made it the other. The family dynamic is there, all the family trauma uh, from things that have happened with the death of the grandmother and uh, Davis getting, you know, horribly burned in a fire because Corn pushed him into it. Uh, and you do feel for all the characters, but this is not a family that sits down and talks about these things so they can work them out. That's what makes them dysfunctional. That's what makes them uh, <clears throat> so fraught with anger and jealousy and uh, bitter feelings toward each other. And it all comes to a head along with some other characters uh, uh, in the end that it will just blow you away. I enjoyed this book fully. I highly recommend it. And you should pick up a copy and check it out right now. I'll leave a link down below to Amazon if you want to purchase it on there. And I'll also leave a link to my Twitter feed if you want to join me on the Twitter and, uh, you know, talk about some things. That'd be great. But man, pick up this book. As always, thank you for spending a little bit of your time listening to me. I appreciate you guys watching these videos. And until we meet again, keep reading spooky, my friends.